Hello, and welcome back to probably one of the sort of almost last videos that you'll watch um, for the school year. What I want to talk about today is populations and some characteristics that they d tend to follow. So last video, we talked about community interactions. And so remember, a community is a whole bunch of populations in the same area. So now we're just going to look at specific characteristics of just one population. And all populations have these types of characteristics. These are very generalized. Um, we can use these characteristics for humans, lions, or anything of that case. So please make sure that you leave space in between each slide and in between each section because I am going to be adding graphs to each section. I don't know if I'm going to print them out or I'm going to have you draw them, but either way, just leave a little bit of space in between so that you know to write. I know that you're kind of getting used to the new way we're doing notes and the how much I'm adding, so please make sure you leave that space. Um, all right, so just a quick reminder. Communities are made up of populations of different species. In biology, a population is a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area, and I'm going to get into the, all of that here in a second. After this video, you should be able to define population, size, density, and dispersion, relate population pyramids and survival ship curves to population structure, identify factors that determine population growth rate, and finally compare and contrast exponential and logistic growth. Um, so uh, quite a few things in this video. The notes aren't very long here, but again, I will be adding things, and so please make sure you are leaving space in between um, so that you can add or you can write in between them. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about population. I have already said before, a population is a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area. So the big important thing is that they live in the same area. If two organisms are the same species, but they don't live in the same area, they are not a part of the same population. So please make sure you understand that. So let's get into the first idea, population size. And this may seem obvious to you, but I want to make sure I say it. Population size is the number of individuals in a population. So an example would be a population of insects might consist of 100 individual insects. So that is the population size. Um, population size influences the ch chances of a species surviving or going extinct, which makes sense. If there is only one of a species, that population size is very small. It's probably not going to survive and it's going to go extinct after so much time. <coughs> Excuse me. So generally, very small populations are at greater risk of extinction. So one of the big things and basic things of being a living organism is the chance of reproduction. If you can't reproduce, then you can't cr increase your population size, and then there's a chance of extinction. Um, however, the size of a population may be less important than its density. So that leads us into the next factor here, population density, which is the average number of individuals in a population per unit of area or volume. All right, so I'm going to go back to that 100 insects. insects. So remember, 100 insects is the size, the population size. Um, now let's talk about that density. So like I said, it's the number of individuals in a population per unit of area or volume. So however much space that individual takes up. So 100 insects that live in an area of 100 square meters. So that would mean that I have one insect per square meter. If I have 100 insects, 100 square meters, 100 divided by 100 is one. So that would be one insect per square unit. If the same population lives in an area of only one square meter, what do you think that density would be? And we'll do that in class if you don't understand what I'm talking about. But you got to just understand that this could cause for crowding. This could cause for health issues. Um, this could cause for more competition. So keep these things in mind in regards to population density. The next factor in regards to population is population distribution. Um, so reminder, population density just gives the average number of individuals per unit or area of volume or volume, excuse me. So often individuals in a population are not spread out evenly. Instead, they may live in clumps or some other kind of pattern. So this leads us into the idea of population distribution. And this describes how the individuals are distributed or spread throughout their habitat. So just because those 100 insects have 100 square meters available to them, doesn't mean they're actually gonna take advantage of that entire space. They might still stay in a clump or some type of pattern. And so there are different patterns of population distribution. There's clumped, there's random, and there's uniform. And I am going to talk about all three of those things in class. So please make sure that you have space for all those. Again, that's clumped, random, and uniform. All right, I feel like I've been talking really, really fast. So I think I'm going to take a minute and slow down. So in the last slide, we talked about population and 
some of the things, some of the characteristics that are involved with population. So population size, remember, it's just the size of that population. So however many organisms make up that population. The density is how much space those organisms take up. And then distribution is how far or how spread apart those organisms are within that density space or within that space. So like I said, there are three different types of distribution. And those are really important to helping an organism, not only with behavior and reproduction, but also with survivor, survivorship. So the big thing with any population is the idea to pass on your traits to survive, to increase your population numbers. That's the ultimate goal. Um, so we can actually like put these on a visual aspect or we can identify these things and what creates a um, successful population. So population structure is the idea of showing us what this population looks like based off certain trait or characteristics. So population growth is the change in the size of the population over time. So either it could either be a uh, well, generally, when you think of growth, you think of how big this will go. But we're going to think of it as just that change in the population over time. An important factor in population growth is the age sex structure. And so what this means is it's the idea that n there are a certain number of individuals of every population, and each of these individuals have a sex and an age. And depending on the, the sex and the age will determine some of the success criteria of that population. Um, so the age sex structure influences population growth because younger people or not even people, but younger organisms are more likely to reproduce while or older organisms have higher rates of dying, which is generally true, right? You, you're going to hear about older people, you know, passing on before younger people. Um, generally when older people pass on, it's, you know, they lived a great life, but when younger people pass away on, on, unknowingly that's really quite shocking to people so this goes with the idea that we're passing on our traits at young ages so an age structure age sex structure like i said is the number of individuals of each sex and age in the population and this can be represented by a population pyramid so basically all it is is it's a bar graph and i'm going to give you an example of what this looks like and labeled so please make sure you leave space in between this um and on this bar graph, it actually doesn't look like a traditional bar graph because instead of going vertical, or yes, instead of going vertical, the bars actually go horizontally. And the sex of each, so male, male versus female is on two different sides and then it's categorized by age. Um, so going from birth up, the age increases. That's how the pyramid is set up. And I am going to show you what this looks like. And we will have a few different types of population pyramids. If you can read a population pyramid, it does show me that you understand how the age sex structure works. Another great way to show how um, population is affected or population structure is affected is to show how deaths affect population with survivorship curves. So it's a graph that represents a number of ind individuals still alive at each age. And there are three different types. There's type one, type two, and type three. And these are, these, the types represent different strategies species use to adapt to their environment. So the, I do want you to leave space for each type and I'm gonna give you a survivorship curve that shows you what that looks like. Um, so I'm not going to get into full on detail here because I am kind of rambling on and I'm trying to avoid rambling at any cost. The very last slide and the last stuff we'll talk about is population growth, right? Because that's the biggest thing you want to do. You want your population to grow because I already told you when your population grows, you um, ensure that your population survives and the biggest thing is that you don't want to go extinct. So populations gain individuals through births and immigration. They lose individuals through deaths and emigration, which makes sense, right? If people are coming into your population and people are being born, then you are growing. If people are dying and they're leaving, then you are not growing. Um, population growth rate, which is represented by a lowercase r, is how fast a population changes in size over time. There can be positives and there can be negatives. Um, the two main factors affecting population growth are birth rate and death rate. And there are also, like I said, there are other things that affect this. So for example, immigration or emigration, um, these are all things that affect population growth. So there's actually a um, population growth rate equation that I'm going to give you in class. Basically, it's just saying 
um, population growth equals birth plus immigration minus death plus emigration. So that means that those two factors, birth and death, are two main things that affect the way a population will grow. Some other factors that could affect population growth are things that are not necessarily always taken into account, but that we should talk about. Dispersal and migration. So the idea of a species actually leaving so that they don't compete with their parents. So they leave the nest to make sure that they are not competing for the same resources as their parents. And migration, which you guys probably see all the time, right? We Species or, or populations that leave together during a certain time frame because of the environment is not optimal and then come back. So affecting the, the population, but then not necessarily changing it much, if that makes sense. And we're going to talk about those two things in a little more detail um, during class. The very last thing I want to talk about is patterns of population growth. So there are different ways that populations can grow. The first one is exponential growth. An exponential growth is when, under ideal conditions, populations of species can grow exponentially, meaning they have no limitation. They can just skyrocket up. So as population size increases, the growth rate also increases. The larger the population becomes, the faster it grows, which makes more sense. If you have 200 lions, there's more opportunity to reproduce, meaning that they will grow, and then there's more um, genetic traits to be passed on and spread around. So bigger, bigger population size, greater growth, or the faster the growth will be. Um, but most populations don't live under ideal conditions. So they're, they're not, populations generally are not growing exponentially. So, it, and, and maybe it, even if a population is growing exponentially for a certain time frame, there's no way that can last for a super long time. There are so many factors that limit growth. Remember, we talked about growth limiting factors. And one of those things is competition and the fact that they need to fight over um, land, resources, food. All of these things are different resources that will limit the growth of a population. So these factors kick in when the population becomes too large and crowded. So for example, the population may start to run out of food or be poisoned by its own waste. So just getting sick. Well, it's, a, like, it's almost like a checkpoint that checks the growth of a population. So this leads me into the idea of logistic growth. So population growth slows and population size levels off. And this represents a different growth pattern. So logistic growth, the fact that um, there are factors that are going to affect um, the growth of a population. Um, and so... That's really where I want to end it. I am going to talk about two basic types of species when it comes to population growth. So leave some room after um, logistic growth for another topic that I didn't actually include the words for. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please make sure to ask me on Edpuzzle. I know I feel like I rushed through this. Um, so don't freak out. We're going to spend the rest of the week on all of this topic.